This will be an overview of uh, UNESCO chair with the title Water Related Disaster Risk Reduction established a few years ago, 2016. It's an overview, there are many data, I won't speak about all of them. As you can see, there are many co-authors, I would like to acknowledge their contribution. Uh, the chair is established officially at University of Ljubljana, but basically is based or supported by us at Faculty of Civil and Geodetic Engineering. Presentation will be about how it started everything. Was it a big bang type of uh, establishing, establishing this UNESCO chair? About water in 21st century, some challenges, needs and tools. About Slovenia and agenda for sustainable development goals, our relation, how far we are in Slovenia. I will give a list, a short list of chair international collaboration and a bit more overview of field activities and, and projects in, in last few years. I will give a short contribution to the Ljubljana Declaration statement. Majority of information, uh, which may be not be uh, mentioned here, you can go to the webpage of the UNESCO chair, which is unesco-floods.eu. We bought that for a few years. Of course, there are other uh, UNESCO chairs in Europe, but we have taken D1 as ours. So the first, how everything started, why we got UNESCO, why we applied and were given the title of UNESCO chair. Faculty of Civil and Geodetic Engineering has 21 units. And uh, out of those, one is chair of hydrology and hydraulic engineering. So this chair started by Professor Brilis, he is my predecessor at that chair, and we have been supporting UNESCO International Hydrological Program, IHP, for decades. How? You can see some photos on the right-hand side, many people working in the field. So field of expertise in applied hydrological studies is numerous. I can uh, just name one, flood hazards and risks, and maybe statistical hydrology. And especially, we contributed in last decades by fieldwork in our own experimental river basins. This is very important for hydrology to have it in the field. One topic is hydrometeorology, interception studies, rainfall erosivity, for example, or soil erosion studies. Then we have tackled and studied hydrological and biogeochemical cycles and their interrelations. We have been into sediment transport in rivers, mainly also in, in torrents, we have measured turbidity, suspended loads, taking granulometry or bed load. And lately, in the last 20 years, a short a contribution also into landslide hydrology. Uh, on some of that slides, you will have a link to additional information. So all this old stuff, what we have done, our heritage, is uh, a link down in... Uh, Review article, so to say, in uh, Acta Hydrotechnica. This is a journal we are also issuing at UNESCO chair at uh, our faculty. So please follow links given on slides for further information. A word about water in 21st century. So what are the problems? I think that problems are quite uh, uh, visible. Water is namely at the heart of the three recent world milestone agreements we are facing or talking these days. Agenda for Sustainable Development 2030 by Uni United Nations, the already mentioned Sender Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015-2030, and the Paris Agreement 2015 on CO2 and climate change. More about the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, you can find there is also a link to the original uh, declaration and original goals described in a PDF. Water can be, of course, found in many of those goals. Uh, a few words about challenges and needs. So yes, if we speak by about 17 SDGs, we can see that there are some targets. If you go to the, uh, to the file, one of the targets is that we should, by 2030, reduce by half the loss of human life and property from water-related disasters by improving the resilience of nations. We have resilience in the title of the forum, and this is precisely also the title of the UNESCO chair. The General Assembly proclaimed the next 10 years, we are already within this uh, decade, as international decade for action, water for sustainable development. 
and uh, at the end, there is uh, a knowledge, urgent need for a better understanding of a hydrological cycle of all of, of its components, as well as its changes and the variability under fast climate change in the next decades. And I think the UNESCO chair would like to answer to these uh, needs. There have been uh, given us several tools. One tool is definitely so-called UNITWIN UNESCO chair program. This promotes international inter-university cooperation and networking. Why? To enhance institutional capacities through knowledge sharing and collaborative work. International Association of Hydrological Sciences declared a scientific decade, which are also already going slowly to the end, called Pantare. This is a fundamental contribution to new science of integrated hydrological and social processes. This is very important. UNESCO chair shouldn't do just research in hydrology. It should have, of course, a social impact as well. Nowadays, there are over 700 chairs worldwide, and out of those 170 UNESCO chairs uh, are in the natural sciences. Uh, last year, there was a meeting of these chairs, and uh, a blueprint was prepared called 2018 Geneva Milestone. There is also a link to come to this two-page uh, document. And there are some keywords. Two, 2030 Agenda, so SDGs. Ex-disciplinarity, multi-inter cross-disciplinarity. Science policy society, so don't just think about water. It should be water for society and do science to help policy. It is fostering collaboration among us. This forum is a, a good proof for that. And to increase visibility and, and knowledge. I think that each UNESCO chair working in own country, if such a chair would like to help uh, to fulfill SDGs, I think we can follow in Slovenia and other UNESCO chairs their own data uh, put together in SDG index and dashboard reports annually issued. There is a small left-hand side where you can see which country performs best to achieve SDGs by 2030. This report should answer that question. Within such a report, the latest one, there were 156 countries in the report. And you can see that Slovenia at the moment is not on the top, but very high. Surprisingly high for me, we are at, at, at the eighth place. So we can see from this report where we are doing well for SDGs or where we could improve. So I think that the chair should follow such, uh, let's say, uh, indicators where we could do something better, where to put or focus research. Another thing we might use is taken from a paper in Natural Sustainability, a pretty new one, 2018. Of course, if you advance and you are a developed country, you could measure that by social indicators. There were 11 social indicators described, left-hand side, life satisfaction, income, access to energy, and so forth. On the other hand, of course, we pay for our uh, advancement and our uh, development by cross-pathing uh, biophysical boundaries measured here in this table, C2 emissions, but it is not only about C2 emission, it's about phosphorus, nitrogen, blue water, all the way down to ecological and material footprint. So Slovenia is right hand side here, together with Ireland and Canada. So we cross past six boundaries, but we also uh, already reached 10 social indicators. What is amazing is how Vietnam is just crossing one, but already reach, uh, 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 reaching or achieving social threshold six out of 11. So we are in a good community, but there are other paths we, we could do. Okay, this is very generally what we can do. Now, going into SDGs, I think that our chair, UNESCO chair at University of Ljubljana, that we are supporting directly one way or the other five sustainable SDGs. Quality education, of course, we are university chair. Clean water and sanitation, sustainable cities and development, climate action and partnerships for the goals. And uh, SDGs tackled at this forum, you have the lower six ones. So there is a good overlap. I think that's why 
I, I, I'm here and talking to you as, as a part of this forum. I don't want to go into detail. For UNESCO, for UNESCO chair, it is very important to have a, a good networking to be uh, to be active uh, within the UNESCO family, so to speak. So there are some relations we had established in the last years uh, within especially the uh, international program on landslides together with the Kyoto University. Uh, there is already an established program on landslides called in International Program on Landslides. So we are doing some projects. We have been uh, nominated and also given the title of the uh, World Center of Excellence in Landslide Risk Reduction. This is only, of course, a small part of all the resilience we can talk about. And as already mentioned, we have prepared uh, a World Landslide Forum two years ago here in Ljubljana. We are, of course, uh, collaborating with other UNESCO chairs, like in Florence in Italy or uh, Vienna in, in Austria, lately with a, a new established chair in Kyoto, and also with our colleagues, for example, Professor Ioannidis is here, Cyprus University of Technology, or uh, another one in Greece, which is a locally important international network of water environment centers in the Balkans. So it is very important to collaborate. We are part of many international institutions, let it be as a institution, faculty, or personally. I won't read that, there are links. It is, you can see, how large is the field of hydrology? It's not just about the water or river, it's much broader. It can go to dams, dam stability, it can go to disaster risk management as in Interprevent or International Consortium on Landslides. Of course, this asks for a tremendous uh, work of our colleagues, uh, members of the, of the chair, to really be active in one or the other activity. Of course, Chair is important to disseminate uh, results, uh, ideas. The problem maybe with UNESCO chairs is that UNESCO doesn't give away any money for it. It is just a logotype. It is an acknowledgement that you must be successful to get money out of that to uh, foster uh, research. So we have organized landslide forum. We are active in landslide regional cooperation in the Balkans. I could uh, say that one uh, a good example that UNESCO chair at university should be international active is a master program given here, flood risk master. Co uh, colleagues are from TU Dresden, Germany, Technical University, Barcelona, Spain, and IHE in Delft, and Ljubljana is uh, the fourth partner. Internationally intensive, the second uh, the second uh, period is underway, so just recently we have selected 25, 30 applicants out of more than 150 from around the world, so this is, I think, a good contribution. I will just show you that our attitude or what we are doing at UNESCO Chair is about uh, experimental catchments. There are some uh, detailed photos or graphs, I don't want to go into detail, just to, to show you what we have been doing in last years. The first one is monitoring, in, in namely interactions between hydrological and biogeochemical cycles. Uh, the catchment is called Notranska Reka, it's positioned in Slovenia, there is a photo of it, and some measurements, man, measurements we have done there. Closer to, and we have already heard about, is the, uh, another one closer to Ljubljana, which is focused on erosion processes in uh, smaller torrential watersheds, forested ones, using especially advanced techniques, LIDAR or field techniques, and this is called the torrent Kuzlovets experimental catchment. In this case and further on, you can see there are some, as I said, links to publications. So if anyone has interest in it, just please go and see. Yes, we are into uh, publications, lately into open access publications. You know also that that costs a lot. But yes, we should publish, present what we have been doing to public. The third one is close to us. It's simply rainfall interception experiments in urban area or hydrometeorology is as close to our building here in Ljubljana. It is called the Hydro, Hydro, Hydrikova Ulica or Hydrikova Street experimental plot. Field measurements, dysdrometers, for example, and analysis of temperatures of rainfall distribution, uh, how rainfall above 
the forest or uh, one tree is then redistributed before falling to, down to the floor. And several publications on that. Fourth one, already presented here about the debris flow hazard assessment using Stoja landslide and Stoja debris flow in 2000 as the case study. Uh, the methodology was presented in a separate contribution by your Sodnik. I don't want to go into detail, but this is a contribution at the moment published uh, in Slovenian language in Slovenia only. Another one, hydropower plants, the problem of concrete early stages uh, using optical fibers to determine the temperature, why we would like to tackle this issue. I think water-related uh, disasters can also have something to do with them break waves potentially if such structures, very important structures, are not maintained correctly or annually. There was a very good a keynote from Professor Hibble about that, how it is very important to have observations and inspections on a regular basis. Yes, we are not just measuring. We are, of course, collecting our own data. I think this is very important. Then you believe how good these data are. Just don't trust only data which you can get in literature. It is an open science uh, agreement, so to speak, or movement. And of course, uh, I think that in 10, 20 years, many data will be freely available uh, among researchers. And that, I think, is a, is a proper way to go. But we are using our own data also for modeling. This is only one example. In different river basins, like 2014 Bosnia River flood, we have had Bosnia and Herzegovina, and we have performed hydrologic and then also hydraulic modeling using model HBV, for example, which is also known in hydro hydrological community, and a certain uh, parameter estimation and uncertainty analysis tool to validate. This is very important that model is as good as it can be validated and can be used for uh, future. There are several projects. I will now slowly come to projects, a short description. Uh, mainly, we are getting money, of course, uh, for our research at UNESCO Chair for Agency, Research Agency of Slovenia. This is the abbreviation ARRS. But we also apply to get a knowledge of the international program of landslides based in Kyoto in Japan. So one a specific project is about recognition of potentially hazardous torrential fans using geophormometric methods and simulating fan formation. Three year long, the main aim is to semi-automatically or automatically recognize such fans. And we used a, a certain case study in the northwestern of Slovenia, Suchel Torrent, and using a mathematical model produced in Switzerland called RAMS debris flow. The question was, if you have a sequence, a random sequence of debris flows, whether they would produce a different debris flow cone, yes or not. Using this example, I would say that this, the sequence doesn't have significant impact. Another project, number is 20, 226, is uh, basically run by uh, Geological Survey of Slovenia. We are only contributing which is about studying landslide movements from source areas to zone of deposition using a deterministic approach. Also three years. This was recently published in uh, 2019, just maybe a week ago, in a very good journal in geotechnical engineering called Landslides. It's even the number one SCI journal. The question was to produce uh, some thresholds using uh, modern techniques maybe to use these uh, thresholds, rainfall thresholds for rainfall-induced landslides and early warning systems to be aware of them. A few uh, European projects we are dealing now with. There is an acronym, there is a photo of, and there is also a project web page if you want to know more about such projects. One of those is a regional project in the Danube River Basin. It is about flood forecasting. A few years, uh, three-year project, 12 partners, associate partners, 12 and 12 countries. All about 12, very good. We are leader of one work package, evaluation of forecasting. I think forecasting is improving, not just for meteorology. Forecasting is also improving in the field of flood hazard. 
and we should use such products. If you are talking large basins, it's of course important that you have an international cooperation, regional one, and to put data together and to get a model that works on a, on a large scale. You cannot do that alone. Another one, Interreg project, local one is in the Adrion. Adrion is a local uh, project within Europe. There are countries, you can see starting from Italy, but not the whole Italy, just the part going to the Adriatic Sea, the whole Western Balkans, all the way down to Crete, so to Greece. This one is on tourism water management uh, for sustainable Adrian coastal areas. There are many tourists coming in these three, four months, and the population can be tripled in, in, in several uh, weeks, and the question is where the, uh, the water is coming, how to pump or secure in, in drought period of the year enough water for these uh, tourists. So the goal is really to secure let's say, a sustainable tourism activities, not to restrict numbers, but in some cases, as in natural parks in the United States, you should really maybe uh, uh, reduce the number, but it's crazy. There was a Saint-Tropez, and there will be a title like, we are accepting no more tourists. Please come back next Monday. Doesn't work. There are cost actions. I don't know whether you are familiar with this type of uh, cooperation in science and technology. This is what the acronym means. So basically just the exchange and travel costs are covered. There is one action, land for flood. Uh, also for four years, uh, more, or, more of that I think we will be uh, getting through the next presentation, which is about more land or more room for water. Uh, so you can see that, yes, we are thinking about so-called natural water resources management, how we should focus not just to structural measures, but maybe also to, to others, and how to involve a lot of stakeholders for that. Another cost action is called Damocles. Uh, again, a four-year project. The title is Understanding and Modeling Compound Climate and Weather Events. So if you tackle hydrology, hydrometeorology, you are close then to climate. And of course, we are talking multi-hazards. This is very important. And uh, precisely, hazards as flood and droughts usually result from a combination of interacting physical processes that occur across multiple scales, not just regionally. And we are talking spatial and temporal scales. So this is already underway. There is uh, maybe a short picture and, of course, again, a project web page to get more information. I will uh, slowly come to the last two one. There are two bilateral projects. I think this is also very important. Slovenia has signed quite some uh, such agreements with uh, countries, not just in the Balkans, around the world, like United States or Japan. This one is specifically titled Stochastic Rainfall Models for Rainfall Erosivity Evaluation. As I mentioned, we were good at rainfall erosivity measurements by combining our knowledge with colleagues from Leibniz University in Hanover, northern Germany. We would like really to come into more theory. We are currently comparing three different precipitation models in terms of their ability to simulate correct rainfall, erosivity pattern, especially under climate conditions, because in some parts of Europe, uh, rainfall erosivity will go down, in some parts it will go up. Because we have a local maximum of precipitation in western Slovenia with around 3,000 millimeters per year, also the numbers of rainfall erosivity are basically the highest in, in Europe. And I don't know whether to say that we are proud of that. Let's say this is a fact. And the last bilateral project, or the second one I would like to present today, is a bilateral project between Slovenia and China. We were not aware that we will uh, be getting this um, forum here, but I think we started and the project goes for three years. Uh, but yes, I think that cooperation with China is important. Our colleagues are from Chongqing Technology and Business University. I have given a photo that our colleagues were there. Uh, this is very important to get uh, your costs reimbursed. And of course, 
uh, human resources, I think, are very important. Don't think it is just about the uh, equipment, which is also important, it's costly, but I think each person which is dedicated to the work, some of those guys are here. The next one, for example, Simon Rusian is one from our group. At the moment, for that project, we have just prepared a, pr uh, a paper with the title Hydrological Monitoring of Karst Catchments Using Clump Conceptual and Data Mining Models. It is a, a good opportunity that by bilateral projects we could uh, know each other better. We could go then better to, to maybe larger projects and uh, such a cooperation worldwide, I think, is uh, also the, the idea of UNESCO chairs. This is my 25th slide. Uh, we have promised to give uh, in the template a short contribution to the Ljubljana Declaration Statement. We will be soon discussing and hopefully accepting. Uh, I think that this tool, Unitwin uh, Networks and UNESCO chairs, is a part of the internationalization of higher education. I see that uh, as a part of our efforts in higher education, can really effectively contribute to a higher impact now for us of civil engineering disciplines, of construction engineering disciplines, to the joint worldwide efforts really to fulfill the United Nations 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development and if not all, at least some of its 70 Sustainable Development Goals. That's it, thank you for your attention. the so-called uh, digital day for Europe and the uh, EU ministers it was an EU summit uh, minister summit yeah. in Brussels where they signed a special declaration we have I have the declaration on my laptop and I check with Rocco together your minister of agriculture signed that so which is a part of a commitment under that there is a digital dimension so far as water concern. Yes. And I will send you the, the document, the PDF, so that you can have a look. It's a very important document where you can make a reference. This is a commitment now of the EU member states to move forward in the area covering also water under agriculture, yeah, uh, for the next uh, framework program, Horizon Europe. If I can add, yes, I still yeah. will. It's still good in time. I've I been will last send it to you right now. last September. I've been to Budapest. There was a, a meeting between the uh, Danube River Basin authorities and River Mekong from Asia. It was an awesome uh, meeting between Asia and Europe. And there was a guru we know him personally for years, Sulezi Naj, in hydrology. So he was really stipulating that curriculum. Uh, in water management should change into digital water management. That's maybe a bit what you have been talking about, that there are so many data, not just in hydrology, in water management, so that our colleagues, younger students, should, you know, try to do that differently, uh, not maybe just using models or going to the field. So the whole scene should really change and will be changing, we like it or not. But yeah, thank you for that uh, contribution. We will definitely follow that and uh, add something to our activities before being screened for a prolongation because the title is given for four years and in four years you must achieve something to, to be granted another four years for UNESCO.